एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू लर्निंग ब्रिज आई होप यू गर्ज आर डूइंग गुड एंड स्टेइंग सेफ सो फ्यू डेज बैक वेन आई अपलोडेड दिस वीडियो मस्ट डू सीक्वल टॉपिक्स फॉर इंटरव्यूज यू गाइज लव दिस वीडियो आई गॉट अ रियली गुड रिस्पॉन्स एंड इन दैट वीडियो यू गाइज ऑल्सो कमेंटेड दैट वी नीड सच टाइप ऑफ वीडियो फॉर पाइथन टॉपिक्स एज वेल सो हेयर इज योर वीडियो सो इफ यू आर समन हुज स्टार्टिंग विद पाइथन बी इट द स्टूडेंट बी इट द वर्किंग प्रोफेशनल एंड मोस्ट स्पेसिफिकली एस्पायरिंग डेटा प्रोफेशनल सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट योर पाइथन जर्नी टूडे एंड इफ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द इंटरव्यूज then this very beautiful a well curated list of python topics is for you so make sure to watch this video till the very end so that you can understand what you actually need to study step by step from basic to the medium level and after watching this video if you find it meaningful then make sure to give a like in big number so that it can reach to maximum number of people and also let me know in the comment section if you have started with python then what all topics you have covered so far and especially to all aspiring data professionals let me know in the comment section if you have started your journey in python or not and if yet not started let me know whether this list will help you or not and as always if you are new to my channel and watching any of my video for the very first time make sure to hit the subscribe button and press the notification icon as well and guys if you are someone who want to crack some really good product based companies and is struggling with your programming and interview preparation journey then this amazing platform coding ninjas can help you in that journey because they are really popular for their quality courses which you can see here for everything and these courses are prepared by the top notch engineers working in top tech companies their quality of courses their continuous teaching assistant support and their one to one doubt resolving session is actually helping this platform to become famous among the students and working professionals coding ninjas is back again with their coding ninjas scholarship of the year program which is especially made for the students and working professional an important thing the date of this scholarship test is scheduled for 23rd and 24th of january timing is 9 pm to 10 pm ist now you will be thinking why you should actually register for this scholarship test i will be talking about those amazing benefits the first benefit is a short scholarship up to 100% on coding ninjas courses quite awesome second is ace your coding interview book which is of worth 1500 and will be delivered at your doorstep free of cost third is the industrial training certificate so these are three amazing benefits you will be getting with the help of this scholarship test so make sure to register yourself as soon as possible you can click on this register now button and you can use the link which is in the description you can use the coupon code which is in the description to get extra discount for the registration so without any further ado let me represent that beauty full list of python topics so guys this is our list of important python topics and here i have written down these topics in a sequential manner like when you start your journey with python as a baby step what all things you need to study one by one i will be talking about every topic one by one and guys one more thing which is really important programming is all about the practice right if you think that you only know the syntax and after two weeks three weeks or months somebody ask you to solve a problem and you will be able to write it that is not going to happen so learning by doing is very much important try to solve as many problems as you can you can use any platform pick a sample problem statement and try to code it and that's how you will be improving your programming skills and guys for the sake of simplicity and also keeping beginners in mind i am not going to include object oriented programming side of python in this list of topics because that is a separate topic for a discussion i will be creating a different video for that because whatever i have mentioned in this list of python topics that is to start your journey with python because oops is something which you can cover in the next level when you are comfortable with python first thing is the input output right this is i guess the very basic part of any programming language when uh, you start writing code you should actually know how to read the inputs right different different mechanisms different different ways of reading the input and even the output part like how do you print how do you basically display the output over the console second is the command line argument which i think should be the second topic after the input output part so what is command line argument is basically when we write any program and we try to execute it along with the execution script we can pass some parameters as well and those are known as the command line arguments and trust me those are really really important when we actually create a very generic script uh, which can execute based on the external parameter we are passing using the sys python library like this is basically a system library you can say this library can actually help you to deal with the command line argument these type of command line arguments i would say uh, the simplest one i have talked about in the next part i will be talking about other ways of command line arguments as well and what python library you will be needing for that and next is the data types which is very very important and the building block of any programming language so any of you if have the programming background let's say for 
C, C++, Java. So there we used to have some data types, let's say integer, float, boolean, something, and we declare variable for that and try to access the values. So similarly, Python has its own uh, data types as well. So primitive, non-primitive. So here primitive, the default ones, right, which are common across the languages in float, boolean, double. So they are primitive, right, based on the type of value. Uh, python actually detects what kind of value it is or basically what kind of data type it is but the popular one or the most often used right in the standalone python programming these will be the important topics which you actually should know like the strings how to deal with the strings how to iterate it the iteration part will be common right for every data type listed here you should actually know how to create it how to iterate over it how to even access values uh, which are stored in these kind of data types you should definitely know so these are the common and the string the list part uh, the list data structure in python and when you are working with list two things are very very common like list slicing if you have a uh, this much of list let's say containing 100 200 elements and you want some specific set of the elements from that list so how you gonna access it how you gonna slice it right how you gonna pick that window this is important list comprehension this is also a unique way of, of dealing with the list or doing some computation on top of it and generating another resultant list out of it so list comprehension is all about that you should definitely know about it and practice it and tuple another one basically kind of immutable data type available with the python set basically uh, to store the unique elements right we have the set kind of data type which you can use and the most popular one again the dictionary and this is my favorite as well so i have been using dictionary a lot uh, for different different use cases as similar to the list comprehension dictionary also has this way of uh, writing or manipulating the existing dictionary and to generate another dictionary as a result based on those values and the next is conditional logical mathematical operators how do you manipulate different different variables be it the mathematical operation like sum subtraction multiplication power and the conditional logical operators like and or conditions are less than greater than equality condition next is the if else and nested if else so this is I guess very very important to know in any of the language right because when you will be writing a program there could be scenarios where you need to take a decision that if this condition is true I'll be executing this block of code if this condition is not true we will be executing another separate piece of code so to make those kind of decision we need if else and the next is for and while loop this is basically for the iteration when we want to perform some executional steps uh, based on some conditional and some n number of times in that case we need to apply for or while loop based on the conditions right so we should know that how to write it how to basically iterate over different custom data types which i talked about let's say list dictionary so you can practice different problems related to for and while loop the next is the function which is very very important again when we'll be writing a python program there could be multiple situations where we need to write a some specific function so how to write it how to define it all these things you should actually know and within the functions basically how you will be passing the parameters because sometimes function can accept some parameters from the user and sometimes not there could be two ways to pass parameters in function like the plain uh, parameters a simple variable name or basically based on some key value kind of arguments you should definitely look at how to pass the key value arguments i i find it actually uh, pretty awesome uh, when you are working with uh, multiple parameters and need to pass it in a key value kind of way and again uh, passing accessing arguments and uh, function definition implementation these were the basic things how to return even multiple values in a single go right within a function let's say you computed something and you want to return two three output values from that function to the calling function so how you actually do it and how those value will be received and accessed within the calling function so those things you should actually look at next is the lambda functions which are basically kind of inline functions so quite handy and quite important from the programming perspective so uh, just try to practice regarding the lambda functions how to write it how to basically pass different iterables within the lambda functions and how to write a logic on top of it so just explore that part so next is exception handling which is also very important so it is similar to the try catch let's say you were executing some steps within your program 
and there could be a possibility some sort of error might occur right and for that you want to just raise it and you want to capture those kind of uh, errors or let's say even you want to quit your program or you want to make an exit from your program so exception handling is all about that it is also very broad topic very important because this exception handling is needed this is somehow i would say backbone of the modern applications where you are writing any program or even any important application and you haven't applied those uh, try catch statements or exception handling then it will be a nightmare for you because you won't be able to figure out the errors and why it happened next is the file handling this is also the interesting part in the python how do you actually operate over the files right let's say you have some file named as abc.txt and any kind of files with some different extension you want to read something from it and you want to even write something you want to append something in it so everything will be covered in this file handling part so next topic is the module so this is just like a importing a package right within another python program and that package is something which is not inbuilt or basically another python program which you have written and in that one you written your own functions you declared your own variables and as soon as you have imported that complete python part as i import a statement in another python application those should be get accessible those functions those attributes so modeling is all about that but you definitely need to see how this entire mechanism happen and how do you import export these python packages and i'm pretty sure you guys might be very very interested for this part that what is written in this super important libraries so within this section actually i have mentioned all the basic kind of but very important sort of libraries which you will be using within your standalone python scripts and those will be used quite often right i've been using it whenever i used to code in python out of let's say 13 which i have mentioned here at least four or five i will be using for sure so first in this list is basically re stand for regex so whenever you need to work with the regex kind of things this library you should definitely know what are the important functions in it and how you can actually use it and guys one important disclaimer regex is very much important right so make sure you understand it really well how to write different type of regex wildcard characters and its meaning you should know all these things next the sub process so let's say within your python script you want to actually execute some linux based command you can use this sub process library because it will help you to execute the linux type of commands within the python application and the next is the datetime library whenever you have a use case you want to work with the datetime related things even time zone conversions string to date or date to string and many other things this library will be really helpful next is the json so whenever you want to work with the data which is let's say kind of json or you want to manipulate the things within your python application using the uh, json attributes kind of thing then this library will be helpful for you similarly if you want to work with a csv file okay then you can use this csv library and you will be able to access any csv file and just to manipulate it reading its rows and columns next is the request library so whenever you want to work with the apis right let's say uh, hitting the api uh, get request post request passing the payload and accessing the uh, returned output so this library will be helpful for you request library so next library is arg parse which is basically for the argument parser so i'm pretty sure you might have seen let's say you have written a java program and when you are actually executing it then you might have seen that some variables are passed let's say hyphen hyphen date some date value hyphen hyphen name some name value so this way of passing command line arguments is actually different from the normal one and can be handled with the arg parse library if you want to pass parameters in that different way the config parser again can be very very important let's say you have written an application and your important credentials or uh, let's say important uh, attributes or important values which you don't want to expose within your python application you might be storing it to somewhere else let's say any external files you can call it a configuration file let's say what was your server ip what was your uh, database username password and many other things so you can write those credentials or things in a config file and using this library you can pass that config file and can access those values mentioned in the config file as an attribute and just play around it next the database access libraries that can be anything and will based on the use case for sure so here i have mentioned the most simplest one mysql let's say you want to work with the mysql database you want to communicate with the mysql database from your python application you need a library so that you can access different function let's say dot connect method how to make a connection to database and then dot query dot execute so these kind of methods you definitely need and those can be provided by the database access libraries let's say you want to work with the postgres right so 
postgres sequence kind of library will also be available in python so that's why i mentioned based on the use case next the logging right again the important one so you can definitely watch some videos to understand what logging is you can go through with some blogs to understand more about the logging and how different different levels of logging works debugging info error warning right so first understand and how to actually apply it in a python application that you can done with the logging library next is the smtp lib so this is basically for the automated mailing part right if you want to send a a uh, mail automated emails right and want to access the emails from your python script uh, for the sake of automation you can use this smtp library that can be helpful uh, next is the pandas library this is very very much important from the big data processing perspective because this library can help you for the data exploration part in the structured format or probably you can say in the data frame format where you will be having the rows and columns you can access the row values you can access any specific value based on the column and many other things you can play around within the pandas library so this is mostly dedicated for the data representation data accessing right in the structured format and to play around it and even performing different different wide operations right doing the group by filtration and uh, doing the join operations merge operation concat of different different data sets so there it can be really helpful next the numpy this is also quite important because this provides more and more a uh, complex kind of mathematical and statistical function which you can apply and even it helps to manipulate the data which is kind of different dimension let's say not only 2d kind of data 3d 4d and some kind of nd kind of data so in that case numpy can be really helpful so that's what i had for you all in this video guys i hope this list of python topics will definitely help you to start your journey with it and if you are preparing for the interviews i will keep bringing other videos where i will be enriching this list so that you can get to know more more about the important python topics or even libraries related to the big data processing as well and subscribe the channel press the notification icon i'll see you guys in the next video till then just stay safe stay home take care yourself and your family too